Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship today. Welcome to St. Peter's on this Lord's Day. Today there will be quiet communion following the service. If you'd like to receive the Holy Sacrament, simply move up to the front pews after the service has ended and after the rest of the congregation has departed the hall, I'll invite you up to the altar rail to receive the Eucharist. After quiet communion is the annual meeting of our congregation. The Sunday school kids are asked to head directly downstairs and there will be uh, treats for the kids down there followed by their class. Um, confirmation students, please plan to attend the annual meeting today as, as your class today. And after our annual meeting, there will be the potluck lunch. Tomorrow, the worship and music committee meets. And also tomorrow night, 6.30, the Monday night Bible study begins again with Bonnie Erickson. Wednesday morning is our text study here, 9 a.m. and quilting. And that evening, the choir practice resumes. Are there other announcements from the congregation this morning? In the prayers of the church, we remember the life and witness of Lester Steichen, Vida Lashovsky's brother-in-law. Lester's funeral was held yesterday in Moundsview, Minnesota. We begin worship. Please stand. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us, even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive to Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts, through faith. Let's join in singing our opening hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Worship continues on page 147 at the front part of your hymnal. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day printed on your insert. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading this morning is from the first book of Jeremiah, 4 through 10. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. We will read Psalm 71. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my crag and my stronghold. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 through 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, 
I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but when we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Please read this with me. Then Jesus began to say to all in the synagogue in Nazareth, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself, and you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff but he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the word of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite the children who are here this morning to come up for the children's message. Good morning, good morning. Come on down. 
Have a seat. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Anyone who's who's wide awake? No? Okay, a few. <laughs> who's sort of awake? Sort of awake? Okay. Well, I'm glad you're here. It's so good to see you. Come on up, sit down. All right. So I have a few things I wanted to show you. Hello, hello, come on up. And I'll see if you can guess why I have these things here. What does this look like? Heart. It looks like a heart, yep, okay. And what do these look like? Valentine cards. Valentine cards. Now why might I have some of these things hanging around? It's yes, it's, well it is almost Valentine's Day, but that's not for two weeks. But did you hear what the whole second reading today was about? Did you hear a word we said a whole bunch during that reading? It starts with an L, love. Yep, that second reading today, it's all about love. And I wanted to share, it reminded me actually of a book that I used to read to my boys all the time when they were teeny tiny. And I wanted to share it with you, and maybe you've read it before. Have any of you seen this book before? Oh, I remember that. Do you remember it? Good. <laughs> it's called I Love You Through and Through. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one of the best books ever, so I'm going to read it to you right now, okay? You no, know, it's not long at all. <laughs> it says, I love you through and through. I love your top side. I love your bottom side. I love your inside and your outside. Hold on. I love your happy side and your sad side. Your silly side and your mad side. I love your fingers and your toes your ears, and your nose. It's a pretty good book so far, isn't it? I love your hair and your eyes, your giggles and your cries. I love you running and walking. I love you silent and talking. I love you through and through Yesterday, today, and tomorrow too. The end. Now, who do you think do you think who do you think is saying this to these this kiddo? Who do you think wrote this book? Jesus. A parent, yeah. But that's very good. You said Jesus. And you know what? The our Bible reading today is all about how much God loves us because you know, your parents love you more than anything in the whole world. But even that kind of love doesn't compare to how much God loves each of you. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful thing that we can't even imagine. Can't even imagine. But you know, as we think about love today, as we hear these readings, and as we know that Valentine's Day is coming up, and that's a time when we think about love too, don't ever forget that God loves you so very much. You know that, right? You know that? Okay. Don't ever forget it. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of love in our lives. Where would we be without it? Thank you for your love, which we can't even begin to understand, but everything good in our lives comes from you. And so, Lord, bless these children. May they feel surrounded by love, by their church, by their families. Help us to raise them in this faith and to support them in every way we can. Guide us in all our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up, and you do have a little treat up here. Whoa, sorry. I'm backing into people, sorry. <laughs> keep running into people. Sorry. I'll just stop. There we go. For a second, I think they just came up with candy. No, oh, yeah, well.
The Lord be with you. I'll share um, some words with you from C.S. Lewis. He wrote, To love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will be wrung out and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. Because to love is to be vulnerable. It was probably about three years ago now, I presided at the funeral of a young man who died suddenly from a previously undiagnosed heart condition. That afternoon he had felt like he just hadn't felt very good and he said he was going to go lay down and take a nap and he just never woke up again. 39 years old. I met with his wife to plan the service and we talked for a long time about their life together. They had been extremely close, I mean truly great companions. And she told me some stories. She told me about when they met each other. They met at a bar on St. Patrick's Day. It was a holiday that was, was special to both of them because they were both Irish. And by the end of the evening, she says, when she saw him drive away, she said out loud to herself, that's the one. I'm going to marry that guy. She told me so many stories. She told me about things they loved to do together, how thoughtful he was, how capable he was. And she talked about their wedding 15 years before and how much fun they had planning it. They had gotten married at a Lutheran church and, and they didn't want their wedding to be like everybody else's wedding. You know, they wanted it to be unconventional and quirky. And, and so they, um, they always talked about how when they went to other weddings, they would, they would joke about how everybody used this text from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13 and how they would never have that reading at their wedding. Well, the wife, she asked me to choose the scripture for the funeral. And maybe because she had talked about this text from 1 Corinthians, I kept thinking about it, and I thought about how, I thought about his life, and I thought about the love that they shared. And so I asked her, well, could I share this reading at his funeral? And why I wanted to do that, and she agreed. And in fact, now I share this reading at many funerals, because, especially because of that verse 15, where it says, faith and hope and love, but the greatest of these is love. And abide means to last, it means to go on, it means to remain. And what a comforting thought that is to know that even though death happens and, and some things do change, that something remains. God's love for us, surely by God's grace, but then also through God, the love gifted to one another in this life. And so although this text is, is one of the most well-known and maybe most overused texts that there is. It is truly, truly a great scripture when we stop and think about what is being said. And certainly it's a great text for church communities as we think about our life together, especially if you think about what was happening in the Corinthian church during the time that this was written. First Corinthians was written to a community that was having a very difficult time staying together. There was division, there was disorder in worship, there were people bickering about spiritual gifts, and there was overall this sense of immaturity in the church. And Paul was writing to the Corinthians to get them to move past all of that and to live as he describes it in a more excellent way, to live in love, 
to live in love. To live in love. Now to us, that might sound a little bit flowery, like a little bit too much like a tagline from a, a Hallmark movie of the week or something. But the truth is that to live in love is perhaps the greatest mission statement a church could possibly have. Because without love, it doesn't matter what budgets or buildings or, or missional strategies we have. A balanced budget, a, an attractive, well-kept building, a perfectly worded vision statement, these aren't the things that give the church the shape that God desires. Even if we were all to have our, our whole Bibles and our small catechisms memorized, even if we were theologically perfect, even if we were to excel at stuff like social justice and activism every day, if we did all of those things but forgot to be a community of love, then we've lost our way. It's an unfortunate that in our language, we tend to water down the word love. I mean, it's a little bit tragic, isn't it, that we use that same word to describe wildly different things, you know? Like, I can say, I love peanut butter, you know? But I also, I love my children. Now, we know, you know, that when we say those two different things, we mean it in a very different way. But this overuse of that word, it can tend to take away some of the power behind that word, love. And the thing that's often overlooked in this text from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is that the love being talked about here is active. It's best translated actually as love shows patience. Love acts with kindness. Love is this busy, active thing that never ceases working. And so the whole point of this text, it's not to show some flowery description of thoughts of love, but it's describing what love does, what real love does. And it's probably important to note that the scripture never says that this kind of love feels good. We've talked about, in our Bible study on Wednesday mornings a few times, we've talked about how in the Greek language, there were different words for different kinds of love. There's eros that describes passionate love, and there's philia, which describes the love between friends. But here, the love that is talked about is agape. And that is the kind of love God has for us. It's selfless. It longs for the best for the other. And it's rarely a feel-good kind of love when we practice this kind of love. In, in the context of this text, it would be better to say that the measure of love is its capacity for tension and disagreement without division. I'll say that again. In the context of this text, what love is, is its capacity for tension and disagreement without division. And so that's why this is such a beautiful text for church communities, for funerals, and for weddings. It's not the kind of love decorated in frosting and cakes. It's, it's not the kind of love dressed up in a white dress and a black tux, but it's the kind of love that people know when you've lived in relationship for any real amount of time. Louis de Barnier, the novelist, he wrote, love itself is what is left over when being in love has burned away. And this is both an art and a fortunate accident. It is like roots that grow toward each other underground and when all the pretty blossoms have fallen from our branches, we found that we were one tree and not two. It's the kind of love that works hard to forgive 
and to rebuild trust when trust has been broken. It's the kind of love that weathers years, years that contain all sorts of joy and sorrow. It's the kind of love that celebrates what's great and sticks with it through the muck. It's the kind of love that actually sometimes it's the kind of love that knows when it's time to let go of another person and trust that even this can be done with love, with caring respect. I knew an extraordinary couple at my church in Colorado who had been married for 10 years and they realized after many years of therapy and, and many years of prayer that they did not want to be married anymore. They cared for each other. They wanted the best for each other. Neither were having an affair with someone else. They just came to the mutual conclusion that they should not be married. An extremely faithful couple, they asked if on the day of their divorce, if they could come and pray with me after they signed their divorce papers. They talked about how important having their wedding in their church had been and to be surrounded by prayer that day had been and they wanted that same kind of prayer to be with them now as their relationship as a married couple came to an end. They came over to the church and we went into the quiet sanctuary. No one else was around. <clears throat> and I shared some scripture and some prayers and then they took off their rings and they gave them back to each other. They hugged and they cried and it was so deeply sad, but it was also so full of love. And over the next years, I saw this couple handle their divorce with an immense amount of love. They had children, so they, they still always got together Sunday nights to eat together. Both parents went to all the games and the school activities to support the kids. Their houses were only blocks apart so the kids could run back and forth between the two. They might have been divorced, but their love didn't end. And it was an extraordinary thing to behold. But real love always is. I think of my pastor friend who, who told me, about how she's always given her children a blessing every morning before they go to school. And one day she and her youngest were having a quarrel over something and he grabbed his backpack and he stormed out the door, slamming the door behind him. But a moment later he came back in the door and he said gruffly, you didn't bless me yet. <laughs> And she blessed her boy with his brow still furrowed in anger at her and she with tears running down her face. Real love is an extraordinary thing. I think of Mickey, a man whose funeral I did almost a year ago. Diagnosed with cancer in the spring, it spread quickly through his body and by Christmas he was in hospice care. And his wife Amanda was sleeping every night in that chair by his bed. And each day I would ask her how she was doing and if she was getting rest, but all she cared about was that she was near to him doing whatever she could to ease his pain in whatever days he had left. Real love is an extraordinary thing. And I think of how God has seen fit to love us so much, giving Jesus life so that we don't have to fear death, I don't pretend to understand it, but I know it is grace. And because of it, we must do all we can to bless the world with grace as well, to live in love. And that is my prayer for us, church. As we enter our annual meeting, as we think about our congregation and our years to come in ministry, I pray that we live in love because real love is an extraordinary thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
gathered as children of the same Lord, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Make your church a prophetic voice for the voiceless, a bold witness of love to the neighbor, and a force for hope in all the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guard all creatures that fly, swim, creep, and walk upon the earth. Defend and preserve threatened lands and waters. Lord, in your mercy. Stir leaders of all nations to compassion and righteous anger in the face of injustice, and lead them to rejoice in the truth that all people are beloved children of the Most High. Lord, in your mercy. Grant patience, endurance, healing, and hope to all those in any need. Give strength to those living with addictions and comfort to those who have lost jobs, homes, health, and hope. We pray especially for Eric, Howard, Sharon, Kelly, Ordell, Keith, Charles, Paul, Roland, Don, Kurt, Glenn, Judy, Dana, Jeannie, Connie, Stephen, Bruce, Wayne, Karen, Tammy, Richard, Lynn, Jared, Bob, and all those whom we name in our hearts before your throne of grace. Lord, in your mercy, guide the ministries of this congregation, curb our impatience, our envy, and our insistence on our own way, and give us patience, kindness, and love and service to others. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the faithful departed, especially we remember Lester Steichen, all those who have come to know the fulfillment of your promises. Strengthen us in faith, hope, and love until we join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, gracious God, we commend all of your beloved for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us how to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Stay our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our closing song. Um, pastor had announced quiet communion after service. I guess I'll oppose it to the congregation. Would you prefer going in the fellowship hall and having the annual meeting or have quiet communion after our annual meeting? I guess anyone have a preference? We'll just do it after. We'll, we're here, so we'll do quiet communion after the annual meeting. And I hope, hopefully, this will be a, a very smooth running annual meeting. I hope, right? Um, I want to start out by thanking Pastor Ruth this year. It's been an incredible year. We've uh, started the year without a pastor, and now we've, it seems like it, she's been here for, for years and years. It seems to be such a wonderful fit. I'd um, also like to thank the uh, people who really run the church, uh, Don and Mike. Uh, I don't know where we'd be without them. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty easy being a president when, when everything's done for you. So thank you to them. And, and then the people that really run the church is the women's groups. <laughs> um, I, I know where, um, where the church is really run. It's usually Wednesday mornings, I think, is um, the day that the, ad, the meetings are taken. So we'll start...
get to my agenda here. Pastor Ruth, would you like to give some devotions? Or um, For the prayer, would you please bow your heads and pray with me? Dear Lord, we thank you that we get to be a part of the ministry of this place. So many years, your word has been proclaimed here, and, and now um, it's 2016, and we get to be a part of sharing the word of Jesus Christ here and now. Lord, I pray that you give us the wisdom and the inspiration we need for how to do that. Bless this congregation, Lord. I thank you for the ways that they, they reach out to one another and to their community and to the world. Bless them with the gifts that they have. Help them to use all of them in your service and help us all to live in love. May your spirit be mightily present among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, Mike, see, there we go again. Mike's already thought of passing the attendance around, so we make sure we have a form. Um, do you need some pen? Got them? He's got those. Thank you. Okay, review the, ad the agenda. Does anyone have anything to add to the agenda? If not, is there a motion? And if I don't catch you, please state your name or holler at me. Is there a motion to accept the agenda? Brad? Is there, is, is there, is there a second? Um, Janice Haverkamp, excuse me. I, you know, when you're standing up here, sometimes the names aren't quite flowing. Janice is the second. Any other discussion? Motion to approve the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The minutes of 2014 annual meeting. Is there any additions, corrections to the minutes? Does, ev does everyone have a copy of the annual report? They were... I think they were given out last week, and there's more copies here. Don? Okay, better. Okay, so anyone need a copy of the annual report? Everyone has one with them? Okay, we're looking for a motion to accept the minutes of the last annual report. Motion by Darren. Is there a second? Lowell? All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion carries. Um, committee's reports were, were written. We can go through them <clears throat> very quickly if anyone wants. I think uh, I, we don't need to reread them. Um, Pastor had a couple words under hers. But is there any questions on any of the reports as we go down? President's report, um, president-elect, pastor's report. Pastor, did you want to say a couple words at this point on your for your Um I wanted to highlight the time and talent response that was handed out to you. Uh this was something that we were hoping that we could get you to fill out and it's just a nice way to organize. Um, we know that there's so many gifts and skills out there, and sometimes if we're looking for help with a certain task, we're like, man, you know, who, who in the church is even interested in deep cleaning the church? Or who in the church would like to paint the whole sanctuary? Or no, you know, <laughs> but, but we would just like you to take the time to go through this and to... The one page is activities. If you're interested in different activities, um, you know, check that. And if you're not involved, we'll plug you in and find a way to get you involved. And if there's certain skills on the back page that you have that you'd feel comfortable sharing, um, we, we would certainly welcome you doing that. The front page is it's kind of an updating of information. This is great, especially if... Uh, we haven't gotten updated information from you for a while, but I know Don is pretty good about getting your, 
updated information regularly, but if you haven't, if there's something that's chained, changed especially, like a cell phone number or something, but just be sure your name is on there at least. If you think we already have all your information, you don't have to do the whole thing, but do the rest of it and hand it in <laughs> to, to Don. Yes, what? Does anybody still need a time and talent survey? Okay, that's all that I wanted to highlight today. Any questions for Pastor? Okay, thank you. Um, please review the re remainder of the report, reports, the bishop's report, um, all the way down to education report. Um, thank you to all the volunteers and the people that, that are um, working for the church. It's, it's incredible. Until you really you know, look at it, you just think the pastor is the, the one in charge of the church and runs the church, and when you get involved, you realize how many people it takes to, to be a successful church. Um, so thanks to, to all those that have, that have assisted. Um, below that now is the organizational reports um, in your annual packet. Uh, very active in, um, and very um, profitable while also having fellowship and is there any questions for the organizational reports? I hate to speed through those, all these reports, but they, they're written for you, and um, you can read them at your leisure. If there are questions, you certainly are welcome to ask anyone at any time about them. Uh, so now we'll move on to Treasurer's Report. Um, I, I'm going to ask um, that Doreen comes up and, and gives a little bit more detailed information. She had, there was a correction from the and from the one that was handed out in the original packet, and it's a it's a good good mistake because we actually had a little bit more money than what is in that budget. So, um, congratulations to all of us. We've made our budget for 2015. There there um, there the attendance is growing. The offering is growing. Um, it's been a wonderful year for St. Peter's, and uh, Doreen will. Green will go through some questions on last year's budget if you have, um, or should, if we have on last year's budget, and then we'll go through old business, new business. Then we'll discuss the mission plan for 2016 after we d get done with new business. So refrain from the next year's budget discussion till later, and th this is for last year's budget. Doreen? Um, what I did was revise uh, uh, several of the reports, one being the balance sheet. And the reason for that revision is one of the expenses was not appropriately reflected out of the Sunday school fund. They had made a $500 expense. And so I wanted to note that in there. Um, what you see on the balance sheet, which is the one that looks like this, and it has assets, shows our cash, and then it shows each of the funds. So I just wanted to go through. Um, yes. And it also has the date on the bottom of January 31st now for what um, Dawn is handing out. So with there, what, what has changed, actually there were two changes. One was a, um, there was an outstanding check that hadn't been cashed from the year prior. Um, so when I voided that, it also created $300 additional in our general fund. It does not reflect in the 2015 numbers, um, but the $500 reduction out of the Sunday School Fund is now reflected on the revised reports. So what you should see in the Sunday School Fund is $5,961 versus the original of $6,461. Um, some other things that are just happening, in case you uh, recall, our altar cloth fund, we had purchased new pyramids. 
Um, the final expenditure for that was not reflected at the end of the year yet, so that fund will be um, about $950 lower or some, somewhere around that. I don't remember the exact expense, but just so that you know, that fund isn't or won't continue to be that. It was just in 2016 for that expenditure. So I didn't do a revision, but just wanted you to be aware of that altar cloth fund um, expenditure that will be coming out for this year. Are there any questions on any of the funds that are in existence or any balances therein? Okay. Um, and of course, in making that correction, what also was impacted was the profit and loss, um, our, our budget for 2015. So when it made the correction out of the um, Sunday school fund, it actually had been reflected in other income as the expense, so that shows now $500 more for the other income category. So that's the correction. My apologies for that. This shouldn't have happened. I should have caught it before it was printed. So any questions on that? Oh, yes. The $1,800 the $1, um, the contribution that we were receiving for the parsonage that is actually reflected under the heading of, um, let me get to my report. It shows parsonage utilities contribution. So in that profit and loss report, that's where those $1,800 are showing. Because that was for the three months that that was being utilized. Any questions on the 2015 where we ended up? Um, as was mentioned earlier, we did exceed our budget by, you know, slightly over $1,000. So that was $1,500 with that correction. So that was a nice thing that we could meet um, and exceed slightly the budget that we had. Where, what do you, which one are you looking? It's not on that one because okay. this is our proposed. Questions? Do you want me to go through this one more? Um, the, no, that's not the The agenda shows uh, the new business and old business. Okay. 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 Any questions for Doreen on? Uh, you have my. Sorry. Any, any questions on last year's budget? Yes. The naming may not have been entirely correct. This was started back when the, our, we had received some benevolence and some, uh, we started a bequest fund. So, and, and there were two parts to that, that when we receive funds in or the interest income in, 10% of that goes to the money market, which goes back to what we call that bequest fund. A 10% after that has gone into the tithing fund. And we've used that to fund um, different things like scholarships for those um, of our youth that are attending a Lutheran um, college and such. So it's been an expenditure or a fund that we use to help go toward those types of activities. I hope that explains it. So interest income that we're receiving off of our assets from the bequest fund, 10% um, of that goes to this money market which goes back to the fund. We were trying to continue and making sure that that grows and perpetuates and then a 10% after that has gone into that tithing fund to help um, allocate towards some of those other activities. Like I said, primarily it's been the scholarship for um, attending those youth attending Lutheran colleges. Good question. Any other questions? Any other questions for Doreen? Um, should we have a motion to accept the reports then? I think that would probably be. Mike? Okay, motion by Mike to accept the reports. Second by Rita. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Old business? Is there any old business? Right, and that, that discussion would need to come, um, we would have to amend the bylaws and um, I don't, I think, I can't recall the exact discussion but it was de deemed at that time that um, that we wouldn't go any farther with that unless there was, you know, some more, you know, discussion or desire to do so. Um, I guess it's still something that could be pursued if we wanted to. It would be a little bit difficult um, with the, with the calendar year budget versus uh, annual, and you'd almost have to change your fiscal year. And, and I don't, there wasn't anyone that really wanted to tackle the, the job, I can basically. Um, if there is someone that would like to, re, you know, really investigate to see what would be needed to do that, I don't think there'd be a strong opposition to it. It's just going to be take some, you know, it would take some work to do that. Correct. And you have you have better attendance in the in those months for, um, and better opportunity for everyone to be here. I think was the reason was the rationale. So. Um, I can't recall the exact mi minutes. I read those too, but I'm, I don't know that an action would need to be taken. Um, it just, it was looked in, we could say it was looked into it at this time was not being um, pursued. If there is someone that wishes to, you know, if you wish to make a motion, that's fine. If there's someone that wishes to pursue that a little bit more intensely to find out what, the, you know, what the requirements would be, I'm, I would be fine either way. So if not, we just mentioned the minutes that it was addressed again. Um, it deemed at this time it was not, um, desired to move that way, I guess. Reflect that in the minutes for discussion of last year under old business. You know, I have. I better check something. Connie, are you taking minutes? <laughs> thank you. I better double check. I know she said she was done, so I'm. I gotta thank you, Connie. I. Um, so let that reflect in the minutes if that's acceptable to the congregation. Okay, is there any other old business? Okay, if not, we'll move on to new business. Is there any other new business besides the mission plan? Anyone have anything to bring up? Okay, moving on to the new business proposed mission plan for 2016. The 2016 mission plan reflects um, a salary increase for pastor to keep within synod, synod guidelines or at Synod guidelines for her years of experience. And it also includes a increase of hours for our custodial service of $1,000. Um, it also reflects, it, it's a little bit confusing in the line, but pastor, we were providing health insurance obviously for pastor and, and her family. Um, when reviewing that, the options that the Synod has are, are not a very good cost saving measure, changing plans. So we decided that, that we would just keep the same plan, but pastor's um, family has taken some, um, I don't, I feel uncomfortable talking about an individual's health insurance plans and in such, uh, so I'm, I don't know if, uh, how much I should discuss, but they've been very generous and, and we've worked out a, a compromise where it saved the church money and provided them the same coverage as they were receiving. So if you see a line item in there, that, that's showing, uh, Pastor, do I have the, can I just speak freely on the, okay, I, I don't feel comfortable talking about health insurance for other people, but what Pastor has offered is her husband has taken his insurance on another plan, and then we are paying the difference so it doesn't cost him money to do that. So that reflected a, about a $5,000 savings to the insurance through the synod. So it, it saved us $5,000, and then so we covered that difference that their family would have to pay his insurance. And I think that, Doreen, what was that dollar amount? About, about 1800 was it? 
2100 so it right so that's in the budget so if you see that item line item in the budget of a $21 or $2100 um, that's what it is reflecting on it saved us 5000 so we're we're giving that difference um, it also let me get my back page budget my budget here did we want to go through the budget line by line or let's just start with the income as you can see the income has increased for the mission plan has it increased uh, quite a bit in the first line the the Sunday offering has increased by twenty two thousand five hundred in the second line we reduce that by four thousand so that would be a net increase of um, eighteen thousand five hundred I think that's a large increase for us I think that just reviewing where we started from the, in the beginning of the year and where we are now our income has risen as the year goes on and our attendance has risen as the year goes on and I think that's um, a very good indicator of Pastor Ruth leading us in the right direction I think we're going very strong is this a number that we can attain this year um, I'm not sure I, th I think we can but we might be short um, but there are some other cost saving options that we could look at if we if we find that we're going to be short now I don't think we're going to be hugely short as you can see we exceeded our budget this year by a little bit uh, that was and that was a wonderful and and I and I've said that I've looked at it through the year I think we're going to be right on budget I think next year we may be close to that budget and hopefully we can be there we do have a healthy reserve um, and we and I had stated in my report that maybe we can look at and I know Darren has suggested that too maybe looking some of the benevolence paying for some of the benevolence things we do maybe in-house too but that's something to be looked at as the year goes on I looked at last month's or last week's um, offering and I was very happy to see it was very a very well um, very good good Sunday for us so I guess any questions on the on the income line I know that's it's it's a it's a best estimate is what what we're looking at now we could have said that we were gonna have a shortfall the council decided let's not show that we're gonna have a shortfall let's show that we're gonna make our goal and make our budget so that was the council's decision to to do that I had a paper here I don't know if many of you most of you probably know Jamie and I just got back from our vacation after midnight last night so we're a little bit uh, not fully uh, running smooth yet but when we were down there we stopped at one of the old churches and that church was established and built in 1600 and I have the paper here somewhere but in the 1600s and it was rebuilt in eight, 1814 or 40 I can't recall and we, so we went in this church it was open and we looked at it, it was a beautiful beautiful church very old and a lot of history and I grabbed one of their bulletins and there's a very thick bulletin and um, looked in there and went through it and here they were at, they had a little page there they said they they needed I, I'm gonna mix up the numbers here but they were short on their they were short on their fund or their offering and they needed two thousand they were short two thousand dollars a week they were sh running short two thousand dollars a week they needed fifteen thousand a week to function and, and they were only receiving thirteen thousand so we look at I look at consider our our problems and they'd be solved quite easily with those kind of numbers so I feel very confident where we are financially um, and I am very pleased at where we're going the direction we're going so we have to pray for that church that, that they can meet their mission and uh, it was quite quite an experience so it, walking into that type of church that large of a church and even they have those financial difficulties at times so so moving on with offering any questions on the offering as you can see the dedicated re re reduce that um, that might be a little short again this is kind of a an estimate um, we had no changes in the interest land rent or other income the other income is on the back side or as you can see we were very close in other income this year too so any questions on the income 
If not, we can move down to expenses. Um, as you can see, uh, with, with the increase in our budget, last year we tithed 10 percent. And as if you notice, the 10 percent in the budget actually isn't exactly 10 percent, but we're tithing for the month prior to, so it won't be exact. So when we tithe 10 percent in 2015, we actually tithed for December of 2013 or 14. So we're always a month behind, so it's not going to be exactly 10 percent of your offering. That Sometimes we get confused on that. So the, the t benevolence goes up, and that's, a, that's an added expense. If, if we meet budget, that's a $2,600 increase. Um, um, pastor's um, salary and uh, there's the med pastor's salary medical, $2,100. That's, the, that's that increase I was talking about earlier. And the health insurance are, are the increases from last year's budget. As you recall, when we, when we called Pastor Ruth, we acknowledged that, that, that her salary was not in our 2015 budget. That was not where we were, what we budgeted for in 2015, and that budget was already you know, approved. So when we acknowledged that, that, that we were going to have these big increases with asking Pastor Ruth. So that's now what's being reflected in the budget. So it's a big increase. We actually discussed it when we called Pastor Ruth. So um, there's, it's not, it, while it looks like it's a big jump, it w should not be a surprise because of a um, discussion at the call time, at the time of the call. And as you can see, everything else looks fairly, fairly similar to last year. Again, it, it will be a challenge for us, but I think, I think we can get, get there with some, um, help with council looking at you know different things when if we are looking at your at the shortfall at the year but um, we always finish strong and and I think I think we're at a good spot any discussion on the mission plan for 2016 Doreen did you have anything to add or any corrections to me because I So that expense of 250 yeah. odd dollars is not included in your budget, actual or proposed mission plan, and neither is the $1,800 income from the. Okay, so what Doreen is saying, I'm sure most, is that $1,800 is not income in last year's final numbers of budget. So that will not reflect, you know, negatively in the 2016 proposed mission plan. Any questions? Any comments? Yes, I, I do. I think we are a growing church, and I think that will will aid us in this um, next in our mission plan, and that that should be that's part of our mission plan to expand our outreach, and and um, I think we're doing that. Um, you did mention the electronic giving. That there's a form I believe in your packet to we. Um, if you are comfortable doing so, please consider it. If you're not, certainly the envelopes are a good option. Um, Yes? So Okay, thank you. And I saw there was, um, 
I saw there was a place for Easter and Christmas too. So if you just want to increase the dollar amount, you, or you could add just a one-time gift at those times too to have your increase. Though so that's a, another option. Um, any other discussion? I will have to say there's there's some things in here that aren't included in our and some things that maybe you want to consider. I, I know um, Don's salary has, was not cons was not in the you know a change in her salary. Um, it's something that I, I don't know. I feel is deserving. It should be looked at. Maybe the council can reflect on that, or maybe a maybe a bonus type of scenario. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I feel poorly not bringing that to, to the table at, at that when I probably a better opportunity for me to do so. But I do have to recognize all the work that Mike and Don do here. It's it's incredible, and they are. It's not just the it's not just the hours that you're here that you're working. It's 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 quite a quite a chore that they do, and and quite a um, what's the word I'm looking for? But w quite a service to the church and to all of us. Um, and sometimes, a th sometimes it just needs to be acknowledged, and then uh, we—I truly acknowledge the work that that both of you do, and and for the rest of the people in the church, it it is a wonderful congregation. I do truly believe that this is family when when I see you out and about. So, uh, again, thank you, for Mike and Don, for your hard work, and and everyone else that's working for the church. So. Um, with that, if there's no other, dis is there any other questions on the budget? Is there any or mission plan? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the mission plan as presented for 2016. So motion by Mary. Is there a second? Second by Lowell. Any other discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. Now we're to the good part. Elections. Thank you. Thank you for pointing out. Thank you, Phyllis, for doing that. And I see our, our loan for the parsonage is under a hundred thousand dollars, is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Well, great, great. And we realize we're, we're that is part of our in our mission plan too, that we are paying off on that on that loan. So we are doing some wonderful things with the funds that we receive. Um, I think Doreen grabbed my mit my my um, form for. Okay, I think everyone ha does. Everyone have a ballot. If whoever doesn't have a ballot, your name is on it. So. Now, if anyone's interested, please please feel free to nominate yourself. I mean, I I actually did that myself two years ago, um, which which was uh, it, it's it's really came to a wonderful ending, and I couldn't be happier where we are today. So, uh, our new president will be Darren.
and Darren's sitting next to Pastor Ruth. And if there's anyone interested in president-elect, let's just take nominations um, from the floor for any position, because I don't think we're going to have too many that are going to be contested. Um, Darren, did you have some nomina a nomination from, for any of the positions? Did you? As a, okay. Um, we had some, some people asking some uh, a nominating committee, and there wasn't a lot of um, will. Um, there was some reluctance at the time to. There was some of those names that said, well, if you can't find anyone else to do it, maybe we'll, we'll consider it. So now is a time when we haven't found anyone else to do it, so please consider it. President-elect, are there any, other, any nominations for president-elect? Okay, nobody at this time. Um, council secretary. Connie, you do such a great job keeping notes. She did. She, she said one year she'll do it. Um, I, I don't like to sit up here and arm twist, but I, I might have to start doing that. Um, deacon. Now, there's a couple, couple positions. I mean, my position's rotated, so Darren will be taking my position. So the president elect, it's a two year term. It's probably the easiest one that there is, a president. You just sit up here and uh, um, get the reports from everyone else and, and keep. Um, Deacon. Uh, Deacon. You know, when you, it's always nice to have somebody from the family on the council, though. Mary? Steve, would you would you be willing to accept the nomination? <laughs> ever anyone seen the movie Nemo? You see, ever see the the pigeons that are sitting on the deck? They're like this. They're mine, mine. Okay, trustee. Trustee, Trish. Okay, Kevin, did you have? <coughs> Kevin, great. Okay. Education. Uh, Trish. Trish, are you willing to serve another term? Oh. Okay. Okay, we have the cemetery committee is already set. Uh, their next year looks like Bob's term is up. Uh, and we have a successive terms for that. Hmm. We should maybe look at changing that so it's one every year. I see two in 2018. You'll have to look at that, Duke. Um, so we're still looking for a president elect and the council secretary. You will be president elect? Thank you, Jay. I, I can't, uh, I, I was looking at thinking of arm twisting a little bit for that, but uh, you volunteered before I even got to you, so thank you. So thank you, Jay. We'll have Jay Elshog a as president elect. Jay, now we're looking for council secretary. Is anyone willing to serve? We'll just ask for one year to start. The position is, you know, fairly, fairly easy. You take the notes and, um, <laughs> and if your husband's there, you may as well ride share. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Yay. Wonderful. We have a full slate. Is anyone willing to run against somebody? No? Okay, we still... <laughs> Let's also include the voting members to the Synod and the White Earth Con Conference. Anyone interested in serving out 
is uh, Mike's not here today. Was he? I haven't heard. Has anyone shown in, had interest in that? Don, do you, have you heard? Anyone from the congregation at this time? And this is the um, Synod Assembly and voting members to White Earth Conference. Is anyone showing interest at this time? Okay. 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 Thank you, Don. Darren um, has volunteered to be. <coughs> excuse me. Darren has volunteered to the, go to the D synod assembly. Okay. And um, is there a female delegate? <coughs> Well, okay, and you, you'll have that, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, White Earth Conference, did anyone like to attend that? If we don't have, an, if we don't have that attended or filled out, we can authorize the council to nominate those people. Okay. Anyone, if no one's interested, we'll, we'll authorize council to appoint. Is that okay? Okay. We have a full slate except for the uh, voting members to White Earth. Okay. Connie, do you have all the names? Yes. Don? Okay. Don Olson for White Earth male attending. Um, Don, does Barb willing to? No? Okay, so we have one female that would be um, still open. Okay, that's very good, very good. So, for the open positions, Darren Leno for president, Jay Elshog, president-elect, Connie Schroeder, secretary, Steve Schroeder, deacon, uh, Kevin, oh, Johnson, <laughs> you know those difficult names I have trouble with. Um, Trish Maloney for education, Darren and Jane Leno, for, you know, you get these blanks, it's just terrible, for a Synod Assembly, and Don Olson for White Earth Conference, and we're absent just a female for White Earth, and we'll allow the uh, council to appoint that person when, if, if someone comes forward. Okay, with that as your slate, uh, entertain a motion to... Uh, go ahead, Brad. Okay, motion by Brad to close nominations, cast unanimous, unanimous ballot for those listed. Second by oh, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis Beyer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. I tell you, a jet lag does, it does take effect. We were traveling all day yesterday, got home after midnight, so um, it does seem to wear on a person a little bit. I do want to thank you for uh, for allowing me to serve, and, and I and I took over in a time when we were, you know, not clear in our direction. And I think we are very clear today, and we have very strong leadership on council. I couldn't be couldn't be happier with who's on there, Darren and Jay as president, president elect, and then those volunteering for council. It we will have another banner year. I look forward to the to the new things that this council will bring to us. I know they are. They are visionary, so that it's not, not going to be status quo. I'm, 
I'm excited to be here, um, and I think you should be excited. I'd like to introduce your new church president, uh, Darren Leno. Well, I'm the only thing between you and eating, so I'm going to be brief. Um, <laughs> but I, I just really wanted to thank uh, our outgoing president so much for, for all the, the great work that he did and, and for, for deftly uh, guiding us, I think, through some, some challenges that we have with the budget. When we started 2015, we, we, um, you know, we, were, we were looking at a $20,000 deficit from uh, having gone to be a single-point parish from, from Augustana. Uh, we didn't have uh, a pastor, and it was just a lot of moving parts and things that were unknown. So, uh, Barry, just thank you very much for, for your leadership on the council and for, for getting us to where we are today. And, and for me, this is a great place to be stepping into because we have a pastor. Uh, we we um, our, our budget, um, our contributions are growing, and, and uh, mem new members are coming into the church. So this is a great place for me to be stepping into. I... Uh, uh, I don't know if I would have done as well with the challenges that Barry faced last year, but uh, can we just give Barry a round of applause and thank him? <laughs> and Jay, I'm really excited about serving with you on council, so thank you very much for, for volunteering. Um, uh, it's it's going to be great to serve with you. So uh, with that, I'd just like to entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Motioned and seconded. Uh, all in favor of adjourning and going out and getting something to eat, say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. <laughs> Motion carries. Thank you.